on this episode. That back leg is in trouble. I can see it just as he's standing there. Let's get some x-rays. Ooh, that is not a happy knee. And my first real big worry is the bone cancer. Yuck, yuck, yuck. They're obviously causing a lot of irritation and it's quite traumatizing for him. As we clip more fur, we're just finding more and more warts. This wart is directly overlying the jugular vein. This one is giving me heart palpitations. If I cut into it, there'll just be blood squirting from all directions. Okay, so making my incision. But first... He's a good girl. Yeah. Roxy's been born with an abnormal heart vessel. They said that she needed operating on and that we shouldn't wait. We're not quite in the heart yet. Can we get it a little straighter? Stop. This is the most critical step of the whole procedure. If I sever it or I cut it, there'll be major bleeding. Roxy, good girl. At Sydney's Small Animal Specialist Hospital, six-month-old Roxy is quickly making friends. That's a good girl. Yeah. What'd you think? But the lovable Groodle will soon be oblivious to her new buddies. We ready? Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama Bear. That's a baby. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to be picked up. Veterinary cardiologist Ariane is about to operate on a life-threatening birth defect in the young dog. On our heart scan today, we found that Roxy's been born with an abnormal heart vessel. And that blood vessel serves to bypass the lungs when the baby is in the womb. We don't need to breathe air when we're in the womb, and when you are born, that blood vessel is supposed to close off, but that has stayed open for Roxy, and certain parts of the heart then get over-circulated and can cause the left side of the heart to enlarge, which is the case for Roxy. I know, good girl. Roxy's owner, Sonia, found out her much-loved Groodle had a heart problem when she took her puppy to be de-sexed. Good girl. It was quite overwhelming because we actually just took her to have an normal procedure getting spayed and they said that she had a heart murmur and she needed operating on and that we shouldn't wait, so it's quite scary. Come on, let's go. Let's go. As she left for the hospital, Sonia struggled with the prospect of surgery on a young dog she calls the daughter she never had. I'm feeling really nervous, scared, very emotional. She's a very fun, loving and happy puppy. Hopefully she's not going to be scared. She's never been without us before. She's only young. It's very overwhelming. Yeah, so let's, let's cross our fingers. I think maybe if you just like kind of hammock it to the other side like that. What we're aiming to do is place a small device across that blood vessel and cause blood flow to stop moving across it so that we don't get that over circulation of the left heart. I probably just need more tape around it. This condition results in heart failure in about 70% of dogs before the age of one. So Roxy needs to have the flow through that blood vessel stopped. One to another, Amy, what's yes. next? What have you got? This is Jet, a two-year-old rescue dog. A rescue dog? Yes, with lameness of the left hind leg. Mm. In Western Sydney, Rob has been run off his feet, treating a variety of patients, and his jam-packed day is about to get even more hectic. Jet. Today, I don't know what I've done wrong, but the good Lord said, unleash hell. And that's what we're getting. I'm going from one room to another. There's so many cases and we are really busy. Okay. Let's take him outside and see how he sure. looks. I'm not giving him any idea. Okay. Go. Good boy, Jack. A bit slower. Come back. So I'm looking at how this dog's walking and I thought, oh no, Jet's a big dog and that back leg is in trouble. I can see it just as he's standing there. There's something pretty bad going on. 
Ooh, that's not a happy knee, is it? My first real big worry is the bone cancer. The second concern would be is it a bad hip or a fracture somewhere. So many possibilities. I guess we're going to get to a diagnosis. That's the first thing. Yeah. It's his knee. Let's get some x-rays and confirm it. Okay. Check his hips, spine. Perfect. In we go. This dog can't bend the knee very well at all. And I think it could well be a ruptured cruciate ligament. Rob will conduct scans to see how badly damaged the knee is in the two-year-old German Shepherd Cross. Good boy. He suspects Jet will need major invasive surgery. You're going to sleep, buddy. There you go, mate. There you go. I'll just get this leg. At Sash in Sydney, Ariane and her team are hoping to close a heart defect that's increasing the blood flow to six-month-old Roxy's lungs. If it's successful, essentially, it gets rid of her risk of heart failure and ultimately change the trajectory of her life. So as long as she doesn't have any other heart defects later in life, she would live a normal life. Here is the abnormal vessel. This is the opening into the major vessel that is leaving the heart and going to the lungs. The team must close off the abnormal blood vessel before it's too late. For Roxy and other puppies with this type of abnormality, you need to intervene for them quickly because the thing that could occur is the blood direction reverses. If that happens, then we no longer can intervene. We've lost our window to be able to help. Hey, that's not bad. Ariane will go through an artery in Roxy's leg to place a small device in the problematic heart vessel to hopefully block the irregular blood flow. We all wear lead to avoid excessive radiation when we do this kind of procedure. We use several types of imaging to be able to see what you're doing. So one is live x-ray, and then the other is echocardiogram. Dr. Philip will monitor Roxy's heart throughout the operation and alert Ariane if their young patient is in any danger. The ability to image in real time. It's just another tool that we have that improves the efficiency of the procedure. This is the hardest bit. Ariane makes an incision into Roxy's groin. It's the first step towards implanting the potentially life-saving device. This essentially is getting access to a very small vessel in the back leg. This vessel is how I get into the heart. But forging a path through the artery to the heart is fraught with peril. This part is very dangerous. If I touch this vessel wrong, then it can cinch down shut. If I sever it or I cut it, there'll be major bleeding. Betty, you want to sit? That's a good boy. That's a good boy. In southwest London, Miniature Poodle Bert has come to Michael's clinic for treatment on several ugly growths covering his whole body. Is that right, Bert? He's had a few old age warts develop and we've tried to manage these, but they're just bothering him quite a lot. Good boy. Margaret and her family adore the 14 year old and can't bear to see him in constant discomfort any longer. You're wondering why you haven't been fed? It's obviously affecting his quality of life. He licks them a lot. He won't leave them alone, basically, and they've gotten bigger. He's a sprightly character for his age, and we're just trying to keep him that way. So it's time to do something about them. Hey, hi, Margaret. How are you doing? Morning. Fine, hey, thank you. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, can you say hi? Oh, he's hi, not, yes, so, not so sure. <laughs> right, do you want to come through? Yeah, sure, thank you. Come on then, darling. Bert's a lovely old boy. He's been with us for quite some time. And he's got quite an obvious problem, hey, buddy. There we are, lovely, yeah, lovely. Oh, All right. He's always a bit timid in here. He's just a bit unsure. Hey, don't worry. <laughs> so the first one started on his flank and uh, it 
sort of grown bigger. It's very tender. He doesn't like having antiseptic put on it. Then he got one on his knee. Mm. And, and you can see he's actually damaged the tissue of the wart, so it's all scabby and infected. And this one is really tender, this is actually. really so bad. And then he's got the one on his nose. Gosh, he's absolutely covered, isn't he? Yeah. So the thing with these type of warts is normally they're just cosmetic, right? And, and a lot of older dogs get them and they don't cause any issues. So we say, right, we'll just leave them. But in Bert's case, they're obviously causing a lot of irritation mm -hmm. and it's quite traumatizing for him. And he's just been chewing and chewing and chewing. And I'm guessing even through the night, you know, he won't even be sleeping properly. Yes. And you can see they're starting to get infected and really, really inflamed and tender. A problem like Bert's can actually affect his quality of life. All he does every day, every night is chew at these warts and they're actually starting to bleed. They're becoming infected. They're inflamed. It's like having mosquito bites all over your body and the itching just won't stop. I definitely think for his quality of life, the best thing we can do is remove them. What are we looking at sort of risk wise? Risk wise. So with any dog going under an anesthetic, there are risks. Right. And obviously he's a 14 year old dog, so he's definitely older. And it just means that sometimes the medications we use, the anaesthetic itself can, can hit them a bit harder. You're kind of in two minds because you don't want to put your 14 year old dog through anything unnecessary. So I feel slightly worried and apprehensive, but he's in good hands. Let's go. Come on. This way. So even before we go to x-ray, what we want to do is have a feel of his knee. In Sydney's West, Rob is trying to find out why two-year-old Jet is lame in his left hind leg. You can see it sort of wobbling backwards and forwards. Okay, I'm giving instability there. I've got the big bone here, the femur. The other big bone underneath the femur, underneath your knee, is your tibia and they should be able to be pulled together with ligaments. If you can start wobbling them, then I'm getting suspicious that we've got a real problem. Okay. Set try. Ooh, yeah. The X-ray images confirm the German Shepherd Cross has suffered extensive damage to the left knee, requiring immediate surgery. That is not a happy knee, not at all. I'm pretty sure it's a ruptured cruciate ligament. I can see this little calcified area that's snapped off. That would be the contraction of the ligament. Okay, let's get into it. There are many different techniques for a repair on a ruptured cruciate. The gold standard is a specialist putting in a plate, you know, cutting the tibia and bone. However, in this case, this is a rescue dog, there's not a lot of funds available, but there are other things that we can do to stabilise that joint. Rob will reconstruct Jet's knee using a surgical method he successfully used to help many dogs walk normally again. Amy, ready? But as the operation gets underway... Curve it around past the tibial crest. Yuck, yuck, yuck he realises he has a massive challenge ahead. And this one's a real mess inside. This joint is in trouble. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and there's one just starting there as well, eight. In the southwest of London, Michael and Nurse Sara are about to remove a series of warts causing enormous discomfort to miniature poodle Bert. Never ending warts. I'm not sure clipping was the best thing to do because as we clip more fur we're just finding more and more warts. So this is going to become quite a lengthy procedure. Normally we would just leave these kind of warts because they're purely a cosmetic thing. But in Bert's case, they're actually causing a lot of irritation. And he doesn't go a single minute without trying to bite and chew these warts. And when that happens, they need to come off. I have lots of scrub hats. Got my dinosaurs on today. That? Yeah, that's perfect. 
Warts can be caused by a few different things. Sometimes it's just changes in the skin where you just get uncontrolled growth of a certain skin cell. It can be caused by irritation, viruses, sometimes certain types of cancer as well, just like in humans. The problem with a lot of these skin growths is that they often end up developing lots of blood vessels which go into the growth, which means that when you remove them, you have to cut through those blood vessels, and that's what can get a bit tricky. As Michael removes the first wart, that is one taken off, but that had a nice fat blood vessel leading into it. He encounters that exact problem. So um, I'm just uh, putting a bit of pressure now to stop the bleeding. I've just cut into a blood vessel and there's a fair amount of blood coming out. That makes my job really difficult because I can't see what I'm doing. There's just blood obscuring everything. When you cut into a blood vessel while you're operating, you get a lot of bleeding and it isn't going to stop by itself. Michael must stem the bleeding before his 14-year-old patient loses too much blood. It's really difficult. If I don't stop this bleeding, he can actually lose a fair amount of blood. And then on top of that, this bleeding can cause bruising, swelling, and post-op infection. So I really need to do something fast. So you need to use some suture material just to tie that off. Okay. It's a moment of truth. getting into the back leg. In Sydney, cardiologist Ariane has located the artery she was looking for in Roxy the Grudel's leg. Okay, so I'm up in the back leg, that seems okay. She'll now feed a catheter and wires through the artery to deploy a device inside one of the heart's blood vessels to block potentially dangerous blood flow. So this is the device that we're going to implant into Roxy's heart. The most tricky part of this procedure is going to be getting the device into the back leg. And so the device is about seven to nine millimeters big, but the vessel itself is probably only a few millimeters big. Okay. One second, Bailey, can you center over the chest for me now? Let's aim for here. Live x-rays and other state-of-the-art imaging will guide Ariane all the way to Roxy's heart. Can we get it a little straighter? Stop. Yep, that looks fine. Okay. It's actually quite good definition, doesn't it? Yeah, let's just leave it. So as I go in, can we push forward? We can come off with all of it if we want. This is the most critical step of the whole procedure. We're going to be deploying the device very shortly. If I'm off by about a few millimetres or I let go of it too soon, then it could migrate to the lungs and cause breathing difficulty. Then ultimately her blood vessel remains open. So this is incredibly important to get this right. That's really not good. I have a very slippery wire in the main blood vessel of the body. We're not quite in the heart yet. difficult. In London, Michael has cut a blood vessel while removing the first of several warts from miniature poodle Bert. So you need to use some suture material just to tie that off. He must stop the bleeding quickly or surgery on the other warts will not be possible. Hopefully this will do the trick. Okay. It's a moment of truth. There we go. Did the trick. Brilliant. No more bleeding. One down, eight to go. There we go. Lovely. Big juicy wall. This feels like a never-ending surgery. Definitely slow, arduous work. As Michael continues the painstaking task of getting rid of Bert's troublesome skin growths. Okay, so that's three down. The risk of uncontrolled bleeding looms large once again. This wart's a bit trickier just because it's directly overlying the jugular vein. So I just don't want to go too deep because if I do cut into the jugular vein, I've got lots of problems. This one is giving me heart palpitations. And if I cut into it, I won't even know where to start. There'll just be blood squirting from all directions and it'll just be a huge chaotic mess. So I just have to be extremely careful with this one. That 
that's all fine. The wart next to the jugular vein has been safely removed. Uh, so we, actually, maybe if we can have them in left right. lateral. There's now just one lump left to remove, but it could be the most challenging of them all. So this wart is quite tricky as well because you can see just how close it is to the eye and there are lots of important structures around here. Okay, so making my incision. Wow, very slippery. At Sash in Sydney, Ariane is ready to insert a device to shut down an abnormal blood vessel connected to Roxy's heart. Yep, coming over you. Can you come back a bit? It is fairly high pressure uh, insofar as you're working with blood vessels, and so there's the chance that you could have fatal arrhythmia. I could cause massive bleeding. So ultimately, it can be a dangerous procedure. Okay, I'm going in with the device. So as I go in, can you push forward? Is that going okay? Yeah, perfect. There I am. What I'm putting into Roxy's heart is going to be a very small device that looks almost like a two-part UFO made of a certain metal that plugs the hole that Roxy was unable to when she was a baby. And letting out disc one. Looks like I'm snug. The device is now inside the abnormal heart vessel. Phil, are you getting any flow? We'll just wait the 10 minutes and then see. But it'll be a nervous wait before Ariane and her team can be certain it's successfully blocking the irregular blood circulation. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that there's no blood flow around it. We still have blood flow now, but we've only just deployed the device. In 10 minutes, hopefully blood is built up behind it and formed a decent clot. The most critical part of this surgery is when we deploy that device, making sure that we've got it in the right location, because if it moves a few millimetres this way or that way, it could end up going off to the lungs. It's still in there. And it's bowing back nice. So there are certain markers that we can look for to say that we have stopped a lot of the flow. So. The heart rate here has come down ever so slightly. The low end of the blood pressure has also come up, so we'd have less flow. I can probably deploy the device and let the cable go. It's sort of like releasing the fish off the fishing line. Yeah. To everyone's massive relief, the surgery is a success. Okay, wire out. So we're just closing up the incision site that I made earlier to get access to that vessel. Abby? I certainly am. This procedure is life-saving. By far is my favourite procedure. Ultimately, it's because you give them the chance to be a normal dog when they weren't born one. Performing these procedures in puppies is a great source of joy for me because I can see the outcome potentially be great almost immediately. However, Roxy's not out of the woods yet. Okay. Done. The hardest part of this procedure is going to be to keep her relatively still enough in the recovery period so Roxy doesn't dislodge this device. So what we've got here is a lot of fluid trying to protect the knee. On Sydney's western outskirts, Rob is attempting to reconstruct Jet's knee joint after the two-year-old dog ruptured the cruciate ligament in his rear left leg. I'm just going to cut into the muscle that's attached to the tibial bone down below the knee joint. Footballers put their foot down, turn fast, and all of a sudden snap these cruciate ligaments. Dogs do the same. That's what a ruptured cruciate ligament is. First thing I'm gonna do is go in there, Clean it up. Anything that looks like crab meat, we get rid of that. And this is just a, you know, part of what was left of the cruciate ligament. Just all basically shredded ligament. Certainly evidence that this joint is in trouble. And the cruciate is completely ruptured, completely and totally ruptured. So we clean the joint up. Then we're going to drill a couple of holes to 
put in some very special material to hold these bones together in a stable position. And hopefully they stay like that for the rest of its life. It goes across there, right at that point. So what I've done now is gone right through the femoral bone and I've drilled a tunnel through that area. This tunnel will be exactly where my material will go that will hold this together. And we'll do another tunnel in the tibia. We're through. And this is a suture material. It's very, very strong. You know, you could land the shark. Now I've got to go into my femoral tunnel and that's not always easy. We'll see how we go. And we're out. Beautiful. So this is the big test. Remember in the x-ray room it was jiggling backwards and forwards. I can't do that now. It's solid. This is tremendous. This is a real big win. Bingo, it stayed together and it's nice and firm. I am really pleased. However, the big worry is you're such a big dog. It's a lot of tissue to try and tie down. He may just go whoosh and snap everything. They're the things we've got to worry about from here. Beautiful. The next two weeks are vital that he does really rest a lot. Got him? Well, there we go. For Jet, I want absolute quiet if I can. He'll be here for about 48 hours, maybe a bit longer, and then go home with a sling to support him. If he puts his foot wrong, even after the surgery, he could snap it all again, and we'd have to really do something more drastic. I don't know what. Good boy. Just take it easy, enjoy the sleep. We're a good boy. In Sydney, Ariane has completed surgery to repair a heart defect in six-month-old Grudel Roxy. Come on, good girl. Good girl. Recovery is incredibly important for this procedure because we're relying on the body to heal the device into place. If the device moves or shifts, it could end up leaving that blood vessel. If it stays in place in the post-operative period, then your risk of heart failure is gone. Good girl. It is about 8 to 12 weeks until that device is healed into place and so it is super important that we keep her nice and still so that the device doesn't move and set us back in terms of our recovery. It's all right, I know, I know honey. As Roxy recovers, the news that the operation is a success has left her adoring owner Sonia overjoyed. The procedure's gone well, the call was just like, thank God for that, and happy and anxious just to get there and give her a big cuddle. Very overwhelmed and happy. <laughs> Good job. Now it's up to Roxy and her family to be able to keep her nice and still to make sure that the device doesn't move. Good girl. Good girl, huh? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is move this so that it's over the bone and that's just safer for me to go in with my scalpel blade. In southwest London, Michael is about to remove the final wart from miniature poodle Bert. I just don't want to go too deep. It's high-risk surgery as Michael will be operating perilously close to the 14-year-old's right eye. So you can see just how close it is to the eye. As you can imagine, there's a lot of delicate structures around there, including blood vessels, nerves, and muscle. And if I do something wrong there, that can potentially affect his eyesight. Okay. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with this one. It doesn't look like I've interfered with any structures underneath. Two stitches left and we are done. So hopefully 
no more itchy warts for Bert after this. Ah, gosh, okay. We've finally removed all the warts from Bert's body and face. I think we've removed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten warts, <laughs> which took quite some time. I finally removed all the warts from Bert's skin and it's a huge relief. I'm so, so happy with how today went. Bert's quality of life is going to be so much better now. Later that evening, Bert's loving owner Margaret has returned after a long and anxious day. I think we just want to get him home now really and um, sort of let him rest and sort of uh, have a bit of an, a bit of attention really I think probably he'd probably quite like that I think hey Bertie hey Bert come you ready to go hey do you want to see your mum she's here <laughs> come on let's go boy come don't worry come let's go for walks hey good boy come on <laughs> That's there we hard. go <laughs> there we go oh, hi gorgeous Hello, Luna, you've been in the wars, yeah. yeah, Everything went really well today. We ended up taking out 10 warts. 10? 10, because <gasps> as we clipped the fur around some of the bigger ones, there were smaller ones there, so I've taken those out too. Goodness me. Okay. There were a few that were in quite high risk areas. So the one on his neck was actually overlying the, the jugular vein. So we had to be very careful with that one. Um, and then that that larger one on his face yes. as well, just underneath the eye. So I think now he's going to have a much better quality of life. He'll be able to sleep throughout the night without having to chew at his warts. I think Bert is going to be so much happier now without those warts. And I think Margaret's going to see such a change in, in his behavior now that we've uh, helped him. Great, so I'll leave him with you. Any problems whatsoever, just let me know, okay? No problem. He's ready to go, ready, ready to, go. to go. See you later. All right, thank you so much, Michael, bye-bye. In Sydney, it's three months since Roxy underwent surgery to correct a heart defect, and her recovery has been amazing. Roxy. The young Grudel puppy now has boundless energy and is enjoying her new lease on life to the full with her loving owner Sonia and her adoring family. In London, miniature poodle Bert is enjoying life again after irritating warts were removed from most of his body. There we go. Without the inflamed skin and constant itching, the beloved family pet is back to his sprightly best and behaving more like a dog half his age. Six weeks after knee reconstruction surgery, two-year-old Jet is moving freely without a cruciate ligament in his rear left leg. Good boy, Jack. The German Shepherd Cross is recovering well and should go on to live a normal and hopefully long life. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.